for scientific committee for giving opportunity to be here and speak to you. And now we'll talk about influence of vertical tissue thickness and personal bone changes surrounding plants with plant morphs and plant uh, My name is Thomas Minkalicius. I'm coming from uh, Lithuania, which is a Baltic state. And uh, currently I work in Vilnius University, also in a private research center and as a clinical, dental clinical practice. I'm coming from Vilnius, which is really a very nice and green city, similar to Geneva, and I all like to visit my native city. Well, if we speak about uh, our dreams, uh, I think everyone in this room would agree that this is our dream to have stable bone levels like in this x-rays. Why is this so important? It's important for cortical bone, especially for short implants, but of course for aesthetics, because stable bone gives stable soft tissues, and the stable soft tissues mean aesthetics. Platinum switching has been one of the most powerful tools in preserving crystal bone. And if we just look at uh, what is platinum switching, is a horizontal movement of micro cap, micro cap away from bone level. And it was proved already in 1997 that, that micro gap forms an uh, infiltrate of, of cells which may lead to crystal bone loss. The other question is, is platinum switching effective? Uh, I just picked three uh, systematic reviews which state that indeed implants with platinum switching do better preserve personal bone loss than implants with matching or regular abundance. However, is, is this always true? Uh, there are two or more papers, the uh, randomized controlled clinical trials, which do, do, do not confirm the hypothesis that platinum switching is better. And you can see that uh, uh, in both cases, there was no difference between rest of bone loss levels. And if we look at the clinical practice, uh, we might see that uh, platform switching implants do uh, have bone loss. Like in this picture, three-inch trauma, MIS, by horizons, even ankylos, they also have this bone loss. Uh, from the other hand, we sometimes might find that regular implants sometimes have good bone levels. So actually, why, why that could happen is that possible that actually sometimes regular implants may have better bone levels than platinum switching implants. And the answer to this question lays in the etiology of restal bone loss. If speaking of etiology, we must have in mind two things. The first thing is that there are a lot of factors, like polished color, tissue thickness, micro gap, but the other thing, even more important, that all these factors work at the same time. For example, if we have an implant of polished collar and we place it equally with bone, we will have polished collar, micro gap, and tissue thickness working at the same time. So how do we, how do we say which, which factor is, is, is more stronger? And if we talk about tissue thickness, we must define what it is. The vertical tissue thickness actually is a separate factor. It's not biotype, it's not horizontal tissue thickness, and even it's not attached tissues. Because like in this, in this picture you might see that there are a lot of attached tissues, but the tissues are thin. So vertical tissue thickness is a vertical measurement on the top of the crest. And if we look at the morphogenesis of regular silicon tissues, we may say that uh, around T is about 3 millimeters, around implants is 4. So if we have, let's say, thin tissues, then the bone resolves to create sufficient biological bone width. So is there any evidence for that? There is a first study already in 1996 which showed that uh, if you thin tissues from 4 millimeters to 2, then Subsequently, you will have bone loss at the thinner implant site. There are evidence also from, uh, from dental studies which show that after crown lengthening, there is additional bone loss after, uh, which comes after resorption. 
And if you look at the clinical people studies, it, already in 2009, our group has published a clinical trial which showed that indeed tissue thickness is a significant factor in the ontology of bone, of course, of bones. So, going back to the question why sometimes platform switching is not effective, is that we must look at it in terms of tissue thickness to evaluate also at the time of the placement the tissue thickness. And we did it in such trial already four years ago, and we took two implants, one with platform switching, the other one with the regular connection, placed side by side in thin tissues, and we had no difference in bone loss. But the problem with this paper was that it was only for patients with bone implants, so it was not enough for the study. So here we arrive to our comparative clinical study, which we wanted to define, to evaluate how implants with platinum switching may gain personal bone stability in thin or thick causal tissues. And here we set the study with inclusion criteria, also we have the exclusion criteria, but the main reason for the for material cell methods was that before placement we evaluate vertical tissue thickness and according to the measurement of 2 millimeters we set thin or thick tissues. And in thin uh, implants were placed, the uh, healing abutments were positioned and the same was also done in thick tissues. And after two months uh, of healing, uh, all the implants were integrated and we made a uh, uh, screw retained restorations. And after that, uh, we had four uh, x-rays after placement, uh, two months after healing, after restoration, and one year after restoration. Uh, we calculated the pictures before calculated, uh, calculating bone loss, and so the statistics were applied, and was so these were the results. We had 80 patients with 8 Charmon bone level implants, diameter 1.4.1, and we had 8 screw cement tain restorations with no prosthetic or biological complications after one year. There was a significant difference between thin and thick tissue at the beginning of the experiment. And uh, four x-rays show already that there is difference between thin and thick tissues. And of course it is better to observe them side by side. And if we look at the numbers, there was after two months after restoration and after one year, there was significant difference. Uh, in thin tissues it was 1.18 millimeters of bone loss, while in thick tissues was 0 0.22 millimeters. And we additionally made calculated how many implants had bone loss. So uh, in thin tissues, 95% of implants had uh, more than one uh, 0 0.5 millimeter bone loss, while in thick tissues, 85% had less than 0 0.5. But what is most important thing was that uh, we tried to do to extract, to take out this tissue uh, on factor of four of tissue. So we just pulled all the data together and calculated the mean. And here we got a completely different number, which actually does not show the reality. And interestingly, this number is quite similar to all the papers which do not confirm the priority of platinum switch switching the implants over, over uh, regular implants. So what does it mean? Uh, this is about 30 papers uh, saying that uh, button switching is indeed uh, uh, better, but none of, of these papers, there was no initial soft tissue measurement. So again, we might think what would happen if we could have measured tissues before placing implants. And there is another study which is published in the interesting, interesting one, uh, which made the intra comparison uh, of switching and non switch. It was specially designed one implant, where on one side there was platform switching and the other was not. And the conclusion was that platform switching was effective when the mucosal thickness allowed 